Folks just want to keep trying and push and test. Push and test. Push and test our tribal chief. And if you think that those fools are eventually going to get their comeuppance, make sure you smash that subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter. Let's talk about SmackDown this week. Certainly vastly better than that hot garbage that was AEW Dynamite. Woo! Well, let's be clear. I enjoyed the show. This two hours is much different than what I got on Wednesday night, that's for sure. Um, but not all of it was great. Some of it was frankly annoying. But there was enough good and really good in there to get me through. And it all starts with the opening. Like Roman and Paul Heyman out in the ring getting ready to address what happened last week. Uh, the shenanigans that went down at the behest of Adam Pierce, And eventually Adam Pierce comes out to confront Roman and, and confront Paul Heyman. And, you know, I find it very encouraging that Roman is so forgiving of Paul for his incompetence last week. And that's what it was. Absolutely, positively incompetence. First, Paul Heyman tries to set up a no-DQ match. Roman never asked for a no-DQ match. He wanted a last-man-standing match. So he went against the wishes of his tribal chief. And then when all came to pass, as you got Paul talking about at one point in time, basically alluding to he's got a bunch of Jew lawyers, is basically what the hell he said in this promo. He's got all these legal folks that he can go to, yet he wasn't able to read the contract or get the contract checked to make sure that it didn't have the card subject to change stipulation. That's incompetence, gross, negligent incompetence. And Paul Heyman should be thankful that Roman Reigns is so forgiving. But then Adam Pierce has to go sit and open up his yap hole and says that he'll take disrespect from the tribal chief. He's earned that right, but he's not going to take it from Paul Heyman. Yeah, like Roman said, we're not going to stand for that disrespect. If they disrespect you, Paul, that means they disrespect me and they disrespect my family. And we can't have that. I don't know about the whole Paul Heyman trying to go all New York all of a sudden. You do that. Whoop your ass. But hey, it built up to the big main event, which was going to be Adam Pierce versus Paul Heyman. Well, that's something he didn't see coming. Um, so yeah, very, very good opening segment that set the tone for the rest of the show. Of course, you see Charlotte in any match and you assume, LOL, Charlotte wins. And of course she did. And of course, not only did her team win, but she had to get the win. So she had to sit there. Like when she tagged in on Asuka, she tagged herself in and then hit the natural selection bocce looking bullshit. Like to me, when I saw that, that just reeked of the politics of LOL, Charlotte has to win. That's exactly what it screamed out to me. Now, why are they going to be doing my girl, Billy Kay, like this? Why, why, why y'all got to treat her like this? Let her be in the riot squad. She's just trying to help. She's just trying to help. Because y'all know what the hell you're doing anyways. You're not any damn good. So let somebody with some actual personality, with some ability to actually get themselves over and entertain folks, help you. Why you got to do her like that? And then we go out and here's Daniel Bryan cutting a promo. And eventually he's talking about the Royal Rumble and Cesaro comes out to talk down to him. And I'm like, oh God, please don't do the same repeat match again. And they didn't. And Cesaro says, I don't want to fight you. I've already been there and I've done that. I want to face somebody else. And I'm like, okay, he's issuing an open challenge. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Of all the people that's got to answer the challenge of all the people we're talking about in a segment that's building up towards the Royal Rumble where you're trying to feature these other two guys, you got to sit there and throw in this jabroni jobber into the mix? Nobody wants to see Dolph Ziggler? Stop it! Like even watching him get jobbed out and get him beaten again. Like that even has a diminishing return at this point. Ugh! And the fact that it's 2021 and he's a tag team champion. Oh! <laughs> Dolph Ziggler! God! Annoying. And then we get to... Sasha Banks and Reginald. I mean, honestly, this is about what I thought it would be. They were going to have to get creative and flip and flip around and not let Reginald get any actual real offense in because network TV says it's okay for women to hit men, but it's not okay for men to hit women. 
It's just kind of mirroring society, actually. That's what it was, though. It was a bunch of flipping around that nerds are going to love, and they did, that I just view as one gigantic waste of time. And it's not even just about the, the, the woman beating the man. Like, I really care less. Like, Reginald, in the grand scheme of things, means nothing. And the way WWE tries to treat Sasha Banks in some ways, it feels like she means nothing. Um, but, of course, the only real offense got in here of any kind was a woman. I just... No. I just sat there and did a bunch of floppy moves. The finish was botched. Like, can we have some standards here? And all the while, who is this designed to build up? Who is this designed to get over? Is this designed to get over in this whole thing, Sasha Banks or Carmella? Like, Sasha Banks is one of your top ratings, top ratings draws. You should treat her like she's a top ratings draw. You had two prominent segments that are, well, technically three if you talk about women's matches included. You had three segments, segments that were featured centered around women this week. You know, obviously the match where Charlotte has to win is the worst, but Sasha Banks versus Reginald, I'll pass. Not for me, but not really worth griping and bitching about anymore. The Intercontinental Championship match, Apollo Crews and Big E. And you know, early on in the night, Sami Zayn was making a stand. He's going to handcuff himself and he's going to protest his treat because it's a conspiracy. It's a bygone conspiracy against him. He is still my Intercontinental Champion. Just like you know deep down in the cackles of your hearts, he is still your Intercontinental Champion. And when you see somebody like Big E swinging his hips with his belt dangling down like it's supposed to represent his dick, you sit there and say, yeah, you know what? The guy's got talent, but I wouldn't want that being world champion right now either. And I don't even want it being intercontinental champion. Like, stop that shit. Just stop it. Stop it! You can be better and you can do so much more. Do it! That's just dumb and all types of suspect. It is a conspiracy against Sami Zayn. And, you know, eventually Sami was only going to stand for it for so long before he had to make his intentions known and he had to stand up for the rights that he has and stand against the wrongs that have been perpetrated against him. And I hope his camera crew got every bit of that footage. I'm assuming we're heading towards some type of maybe triple threat match between these three for the IC title at the Rumble. And let's hope somebody wins it off of Big E. Uh, one of my favorite segments of the night was this obstacle course challenge with Bailey and Bianca. This was fun. A lot of of fun. This is an example of you could do something that isn't a match that gets both of the characters over in the way that you want them to get over. Like you look at Bianca, like this is a showcase for her. Put her out there where she could show off her easy athleticism and her strength. Like, you know, the fact that I love the way they did this. Like this was really well done. You have to give credit where credit is due. When they had Bailey do the obstacle course first, and then she had to sit there and put Chad Gable on her shoulders and do a fireman's carry the length of the ring. You know, when it came time for Bianca, she put in real hurdles instead of the little tiny hurdles that Bailey was doing. And then when she got to Chad Gable, Bianca had to sit there and carry Otis in a fireman's carry across the thing. Like, that's a big deal. That's awesome. That looked great. That made her look like a million bucks. And then the, the crossover on Bailey, like... That was fantastic. And even Bailey attacking her afterwards. Fantastic. You make Bianca look great. You look Bailey looks, make Bailey look sinister and evil. Like, mission accomplished. This was a well done segment. Why can't we have more stuff like this? Not everything needs to be a match. This is really, really good. But it was all foreplay to the main event. Paul Heyman versus Adam Pierce. And remember, Adam, you brought this upon yourself. Card subject to change. Paul Heyman trips. He tripped. Hurt himself. And when I was then able to get into the ring and actually give it a go for the match. And of course, being a man of integrity, card subject to change. Out comes our glorious tribal chief, Roman Reigns. But he makes sure, Roman makes sure that Adam Pierce is not caught off guard. He's not surprised. Roman walks down the ramp, straight up like a real man would, 
and make sure that Adam Pierce can see the ass whooping that's about to come. Like, he wants to make that known. He wants Adam Pierce to know what's coming. That's respectable. That's not like what Yo Tubby Tubby Kevin Owens did. Of course he had to hide and do some sneak attack bullshit on our tribal chief. Because that's the only way he's got a chance. Roman will do it straight up and let you know he's doing it and take pride in it. But at least you know what's coming. Kevin Owens with the old Pearl Harbor job. Horrible. And of course you're supposed to sit there and buy this whole notion that Kevin Owens is a legit th physical threat to freaking Roman Reigns. Maybe when somebody like Bam Bam Bigelow or Vader, you'd be like, oh yo, you know what? This is real. But it's Kevin Owens. How the hell are you supposed to take him seriously? Now Roman trying to be the best businessman he possibly could. He says, hey, you know what? I got to let this dude get in a little so that way people are more interested in the Royal Rumble. But once we get to the Rumble, best believe, ba ba ba, ha ha. We'll see what's up. Which brings us to the people on Roman's shit list. There's four of them. Number four, it's Paul Heyman. He still screwed up last week, and there's still all consequences to pay. Number three, it's Adam Pierce. You don't get to pull one over on the tribal chief and get away with it. Number two, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens. The sneak attack job. Can't go up straight up Roman Reigns like a man. Got to get there and get at him from behind. I guess cowardly. And that's what cowards do. When they know they don't have a shot in the world of beating the tribal chief. And number one, the number one person on Roman Reigns' shit list, Jey Uso. Of course it's got to be Jey Uso. Where the hell was his ass this week? You going to allow Kevin Owens to disrespect Roman like that? You going to allow Kevin Owens to disrespect your family like that? You're going to allow Kevin Owens to potentially take food off your family's table? I, I can't wait. Like some of you are going to talk about, I can't wait to see how Roman responds to Kevin Owens next week. Or I can't wait to see what Kevin Owens says next week. The only thing I care about right now is I want to see what type of ass whooping Jay Uso's got coming at the hands of Roman Reigns for his once again gross incompetence this week. Negligent asleep at the wheel when his family needs him. He's nowhere to be found. You want to talk about the number one heel in professional wrestling right now? You're looking at Jey Uso. Hard-headed. Don't ever learn his damn lessons. Doesn't get the job done. And the one time, the one time that Roman Reigns is testing him, and that's all this was. It was a test. What did Jey do, of course? He flunked it miserably. Unbelievable. So we got a little over a week to the Royal Rumble. Um, you had some good stuff on SmackDown this week. Nothing, anything outside of one thing. You know what that is. That was really that grating and annoying. Although, you know, again, I could go without Charlotte appearing on SmackDown ever again.